Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. We have a lot to talk about today in this crazy launch day of both Zen 2 and Navi. Before getting into all that, I want to give you guys an update on the channel. I just opened a Discord server for any of you guys interested in chatting about general tech related things. I also want to explain what I'm going to be upgrading in my main rig. With all these new releases, I just can't simply not upgrade something. Unfortunately, my channel is not big enough to receive any test samples, so I will have to wait a while to receive the products I purchased out of pocket. Starting off with RAM, I am currently using 16GB of Ripjaw V CL15 3000MHz RAM. I do have 32GB of this kit, but I am currently using the other two DIMMs on my capture rig and a secondary rig I own. I will be upgrading the RAM to 32GB of Flare X CL14 3200MHz RAM. These new Samsung b die DIMMs will likely overclock much better than my old RAM sticks. I'm hoping to be able to hit at least 3400MHz CL14 with a slight bump in voltage, if not better. I will also be upgrading the processor. I have had the 1800X since the original launch of Zen 1. I made the conscious decision not to upgrade my CPU when the 2700X was launched, since the performance compared to the 1800X was not improved enough to justify the upgrade. With the new R9 3900X just being released, definitely changes all that. I will be upgrading to a R9 3900X, the 12 core 24 thread variant. Hopefully it arrives soon, I can't wait to do some testing. As most of you probably already know, I own almost every single modern AMD GPU. I will be adding to that mix the 5700 XT that was just released today. Just like the CPU, my channel isn't big enough to receive review samples, so I will unfortunately have to wait for the one I purchased to arrive. To sum all the upgrades up, I'll be going from a 1800X to a 3900X. I'll be going from 16GB of CL15 3000MHz RAM to CL14 3200MHz Samsung b die RAM. I will also receive a 5700XT to do some testing. I have also just updated the vBIOS of my X370 board from P5.10 to P5.30, which adds support for the new Ryzen 3000 series. With all that said, I want to talk about the performance of the 3900X and the 5700XT. I noticed a few things that really caught my attention. I'll start off with the 5700XT. I have noticed a few discrepancies between several reviews. I encourage you guys always to watch more than one review to get an overall consensus opposed to a single view from one channel. In Gamers Nexus's 5700 XT video, he points out the 5700 XT drawing more power than the 2060 Super, 2070, and the 2070 Super, while Paul from Paul's Hardware shows the 5700 XT consuming less power than the 2070, but oddly more power than a 2070 Super. That's even though the 2070 Super has more CUDA cores than the 2070. Just like I had predicted, the 5700 XT sits somewhere in between the 2070 and the 2070 Super, while the 5700 beats the 2060 across the board and performs very similarly to the 2060 Super. I want to emphasize this. Most of these reviews launched today were with press drivers. Those press drivers did not have overclocking working properly. They likely had very limited to no voltage control. It also seems like the blower style of the card seems to be performing adequately but not greatly. Once I receive my 5700 XT, I will do a deep in-depth review testing undervolting and overclocking, so stay tuned for that. I would suggest waiting at least a week for some more reviews to pop up showing the 5700 XT overclocking and undervolting. Since the new 19.7.1 drivers were released today, July 7th. I was very surprised to see this $399 card catching the Radeon 7 in certain titles. I am really curious to see in which games the new RDNA architecture shines over GCN. The general consensus seems to be that the cards run very very well. This is the biggest jump in improvement AMD has had in a very very long time. Now let's briefly talk about the 3900X. 
The 3900X is also performing excellent against the 9900K. It completely destroys the 9900K in multi-core applications and will definitely help me do video editing faster. The 3900X also seems to cap out at around 4.3 to 4.4 GHz all core based on what I've seen from most reviews. The 3900X is performing quite well across the board against the 9900K but does seem to fall slightly short in 1080p testing. There were however certain games where the 3900X outperformed the 9900K. These processors are new and I have no doubt there will be many more improvements down the line. Just like we saw from the 1800X and the 2700X. I am very very excited to upgrade my old 8 core 1800X to the new 12 core 3900X. Just like I mentioned earlier, AMD also just released driver 19.7.1 today with much improved overlay metrics for the Radeon 7. The clocks don't bounce around nearly as much as they used to. They also added a brand new power draw section in Wattman which displays the power consumption of the card. Lastly, I know I've been making a lot of these narrated videos lately, but unfortunately I have to wait like the average Joe to get my parts after purchasing them. I will get back to making tutorials, guides, and benchmark videos once I receive the products. Thanks for watching guys. Peace.